Hi, my name is Caleb Witzkin in uh, Professor Corte's Physics 106, and today we're going to be learning about electric potential. So, to understand electric potential, we first need to understand gravitational potential energy. So, we're just going to pretend we have a scenario here with a, a ball at the top of a hill, uh, you know, a certain height from the top, and this is stuff we learned in Physics 105. We know that the energy, potential energy of this ball, is going to be equal to its mass times the gravity the acceleration times the height. And this is, uh, the potential energy is, is extremely important in reference to another point. If we don't have another point, it's not as important. So with electric potential, it's gonna be very similar. Um, we both have, we have potential energy as well, and it's gonna be in reference to another point. So we're more worried about the change in the potential energy and not so much the exact potential energy. And we know that this change in potential energy relates to work in this equation and it has to be a work is equal to negative change in potential energy for electric potential because the negative change in energy gives us a positive work so there has to be a negative there anyway so we're going to do a problem real fast using this stuff that we just learned up here so we'll just set up the scenario we have a positive electric field here um, this way going up the page up the board here and we're, we'll just say we have a positive charge here and we'll uh, say the charge is equal to 2 coulombs and the energy field, the electric field is going to be equal to 5 newtons per coulomb and uh, we're going to say that this force, this electric field moves the charge from this point to this point with a distance of 3 meters so to be able to find that the change in potential energy or the work done, we can use our equation work is equal to force times distance times cosine of theta. And we can also use our equation force is equal to the charge times the electric field. And so plugging all that in, we would get the work is equal to the charge times the electric field times the distance times the cosine of theta. And then we can plug in our number, so work is equal to 2 coulombs times the 5 newtons per coulomb times the distance of 3 meters. And the cosine of 0 would just be 1. And we would end up with 10 times 30, which would give us, uh, sorry, 10 times 3, which would give us 30 joules. And right here it's important to note that the units of potential, of electric potential, or potential energy, are in joules. So, there we have that problem there. And now we're going to move on to the next uh, other section of this. It's also extremely important. Uh, connecting voltage with potential energy. We know our voltage is equal to our potential energy, electric potential energy, divided by our charge. V is equal to potential energy over Q. Like I said before, the exact voltage and exact potential energy aren't as important as the change in voltage and the change in potential energy. So from this equation, we can learn that our change in voltage is equal to our change in potential energy divided by our charge. And we'll do another problem real quick here. We'll just say we have a charge of negative 2.5 coulombs, and we have a change in voltage of 12 volts, and we want to know what uh, potential energy, what energy do we have here? So, easily we can just plug this into our equation and we're gonna have Q times delta V is equal to change in potential energy. And plugging in the negative 2.5 charge times the 12 volts will give us negative 30 joules. And that's gonna be the change in our potential energy there. So. We have another uh, good problem there that could come up just to help us understand the electric potential. And last but not least, another really important problem, or another important equation that we have, is our kinetic energy initial plus our potential energy initial is going to be equal to our kinetic energy final plus our potential energy final. And this, this equation right here can help us a lot. It's useful, obviously, for gravitational potential energy, but it also works for our electric potential. So whatever our kinetic energy and our uh, potential energy are, first 
that will also be equal to our kinetic energy plus our potential energy uh, final. So there you have the basics of electric potential and potential energy. So there you go.